about the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better man for your life with house and home. Good evening, viewers out there, and welcome once again to another edition of House and Home. I'm Godwin Eki and I'm stepping in for your usual host, Terry Samiria. So viewers, we have had several new programs during the course of the revamp show and it has been a privilege showing them. Now that we've been on air for a month, we really want your feedback. If you can get online at our Facebook page and let us know what you love and what you want to see more of. Anyway, we begin our show tonight with Brian Bell. Here's Jane and Mark showing us the Integrity Cooktops. Hi Mark, hi viewers, I'm Jane Tokilala and welcome to Brian Bell. Hi Jane, hi viewers. So Jane, what does Brian Bell has in store for tonight? Well Mark, as you know, Brian Bell covers a large selection of small kitchen appliances that we have available and from famous brands like Breville, Cambrook, Sharp and many more. So tonight I will feature different styles of cooktops that we have available from Brian Bell's very own reliable and economical brand. The integrity brand. Jane, Brian Bell's reliable and economical brand? That's right, Mark. Follow me and I'll show you. Okay. The brand name speaks for itself as it carries on the legacy of Brian Bell to provide the qualities of a trusted brand. It was customized to cater for the affordable range and yet have that standard and quality to meet the ever demanding and growing PNG market. The integrity cooktops are available in electric or gas banners. They are suitable for any lifestyle such as in the village, for a student in a dormitory, single people living in shared accommodation and for any family size. These banners are portable cooktops where you can use indoors or enjoy the breeze outside while cooking. For that single person, student or someone on the go, we have available the electric um, single banners. We have available the solid electric, or if you prefer fast cooking, then we have the electric coil plates. But if you prefer gas, we have the non-stick top plate with auto ignition. So you don't need matches to light it up. We also have available electric two banners in solid or electric coil plates to meet any lifestyle. The two banner gas cooktop comes with a cover for easy storage after using. It also features holder on both sides of the banner for easy carrying or transporting. For the huge families we have available the gas four banner cooktops. These banners feature auto ignition which makes it so convenient. You don't have to be looking for matches here or there. Finally the four banner gas cooktops features stainless steel brass banner caps, glass lid, and it's easy to clean. They feature an improved gas flow for efficient eating. And also take note that our regulators and fittings for gas cooktops are available and sold separately. So basically there is something for everyone. The hot specials for this week will include Integrity 2B gas cooktop was priced at 129 kina, now reduced to 90 kina. West Point 300 litre chest freezer with lock was priced at 1,599 kina. Now you can walk away with it for only 1,169 kina. West Point 7 kilograms tub washing machine was priced at 625 kina. Now it's yours for only 456 kina. West Point 245 litre frost free two door fridge was priced at 1,990 kina now reduced to 1,453 kina. So make sure you don't miss out on this great offer which is running for this week only. Also be advised that our furniture sale is still running till the end of this month. We have specials on selected furniture products covering a wide range of bedroom, lounge, kitchen and dining furniture. 
Finally, to our valued customers, please take note if you're shopping at any of our home centers to look out for the red price label items for huge price reductions. I'm sure you will definitely find something that you've been wanting at a much reduced price. Now you know you can turn to us simply because you're backed up by Brian Bell's warranty, service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices. That's Brian Bell. Until next time, happy shopping. Happy shopping. Good night. Thank you, Jane and Mark, for that helpful insight. That was Brian Bell, always devoted to give you up-to-date brand new and dependable goods and services. Let's take a first break and we'll see you soon. It's all about house and home. We care about improving lifestyles. It's all about the better man for your life with house and home. your life with house and home yeah it's all about the better plan for your life with house home as we all know bsp provides customer service with great ideas and ways of financing with the sake of efficient customer services well tonight we have the beautiful rosemary mawe sharing with us the lay branch opening Good evening viewers and welcome to another BSB program. Tonight we'll take you to Lay to see the official opening of our top of the class commercial centre in the industrial city of Lay, Morabay province. The BSB Lay commercial centre was officially opened on the 27th of February and was officiated by the BSB board chairman Costas Constantino, chief executive officer Robin Fleming and the Morro Bay Governor Kelly Naro. The occasion was also witnessed by members of the BSP board and the Lay City business community representatives, staff and the members of the media. The new BSP Lay Commercial Centre which commenced the construction in February 2013 was opened for business last October 2014 creates a unique business banking experience that is not provided anywhere else in Lay. This comprises the Premium Banking Centre and the BSP First, which delivers a fully functional business banking facility on the ground floor. BSP Corporate Banking and BSP Finance Limited, the bank's newest subsidiary, occupies Level 1. There is also a fully kitted function room on level 3 to be used by BSP as a space for holding special corporate functions, client events and staff training. The ground level of the building is customer focused and was designed for operational to incorporate fully fitted out banking facilities, meeting rooms, offices, storerooms and amenities. There is also ample parking space. Security and safety was a strong focus in the design to providing a secure working environment for BSP customers and its staff. Mr. Robin Fleming, the CEO, when addressing guests at the launch, said BSP is committed to the growth of Lay as the second city to Port Mosby and is similarly committed to serving industrial, manufacturing and other business operating in Lay. Certainly a top town 
our intentions to redesign the top floor to be able to ensure that we can deal more effectively with the customers who come there for reissuance of cards, for personal loans and for housing loans. The reissuance of cards does provide a very big challenge for us because people often lose their cards or it gets taken by payday lenders and they'll come back to the bank to get those cards reissued. What we've also been doing, and we've talked to people in, in our government, to assist open BSP rural branches. If we can get more BSP rural branches open and more cash, cash agents open, it reduces the need for people to actually travel all the way into Lay to do their banking. One of our invited corporate clients, Honey Brooks, has this to say. BSP have been there to help us. They've had great customer service. We pulled them in, had a chat with them about what we want to do, where we want to go, and they've been a great support. Um, we've been banking with BSP uh, for quite some time, and being a semi-family business and, and obviously uh, doing business in Papua New Guinea, we actually consider BSP part of the family. And what's fantastic about that is the team that they have that they can bring to the table. They can help service and tailor our needs for banking, especially with respects to corporate banking and making sure that our staff are paid on time and have the facilities and services that everyone in this country must have. That was Mel and Matt Lewis, Chairman and Managing Director of Honeybrooks. Let's also hear from the new head of Lay Corporate Banking, David Hamm. Working in the Corporate Banking Centre here, the brand new premises which we have officially opened this evening, um, is a fantastic opportunity for, for BSP and the community here. We've certainly opened uh, a brand new building uh, for both the corporate team and our, our retail team. Uh, we've got BSP Finance uh, on the level one floor as well, as well as our premium and uh, paramount banking and, um, and priority first for our customers. So what it means from those that used to be in top town um, that waited for a lot of time in, in lines and weren't getting serviced as, as well as they should be um, and now can come down to downtown and uh, the facility here are fantastic. Uh, we have a, a brand new state of the art um, facilities for everyone to use in Papua New Guinea. Well, viewers, that's our feature story for tonight from Lei. Until then, see you next time for more BSP updates. Good night. Thank you, Rosemary, for that wonderful BSP update. Stay tuned as we'll be back shortly. about the better man for your life with house and home yeah it's all about the better man for your life with house home yeah it's all about About the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better man for your life with house home. Eating the same type of food can be somewhat unsatisfactory to one's taste and it's usually tiring at times. Well, we've got Zeneg tonight on board to show us more of their exceptional knowledge of cooking. Enjoy! Good night to all viewers, my chef very me like to talk. Welcome back to Narla Zeneg Cooking Show on House and Home. Now tonight, baby, we're cooking Zeneg fried eggs with Highlands cocoa chips, okay? And we'll have a fast and easy recipe. You just need one tablespoon butter. Okay, little cocoa chips. Let me with me chopping peanuts and ready to buy me cooking. Okay, me got one black tomato, one spring onion, and buy me blessing water. Okay, main ingredient blame me. Ginger eggs, 65 grams. Ginger eggs, Mr. Chusin, because I'm power protein and power kai kai. Next time you go to the store, 
This is my blood Gina Gags tray. Now starting day blue, you want a Gina Gags. Okay, now we go to cooking blame me. Okay, we got oil and hot finish. We buy me cooking chocolate chips blame me. Now we got frying pan blame me. We buy me adding butter. Now time butter and milk. Buy me adding Gina Gags blame me go inside. Okay, viewers, now buy me cooking chocolate chips blame me. We me heat my oil finish. Okay, okay, now I'm cook now. Okay, frying pan blame me to him hot stuff. Let me add him. Butter go inside. Okay. Now buy me fry milk blame me because butter blame him hot finish. Okay. Now me spread him melt butter also. Okay. Me add him one plat. Then I get 65 grams. Okay. One plat more. All right. You can look him like quality blue. Then I get some show him look. Color blue egg yolk and mini was him pull up blue proteins. Okay, now baby Rosin, cocoa chips blame me, I'm ready now. Okay, a nice golden crispy. Okay, then put the layer. Okay, okay, viewers, Jenny Fried Eggs blame me, I'm ready, now baby Rosin now. So ginger eggs, you can cook him kind kind way in the style blue. You can cook him fried or some now, or you can scramble egg. You can make your omelette. You can cook him kind kind way in the style blue. One time ginger eggs. Okay, viewers, you can look him ginger fried eggs. One time Highlands cocoa chips when we cook. One time ginger eggs, 65 grams. Okay, viewers, let me taste him. Oh, let me taste number one to rule. Ginger eggs, power protein, na power kai kai. And how delicious that was. Thank you, Zeneg. I believe our viewers have absorbed that wonderful recipe and are planning to try it out. Stay tuned as we have more coming up for you. Your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the best of men. For your life with house and home. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. It's all about house and home. We care about it. About the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better man for your life with house home. Papua New Guinea has more hidden wonders to unveil. There is also a great need in obtaining a fair knowledge of our native wildlife. Providing knowledge about our local animals will help keep them off the extinction list and ensure that we get to share our backyard with these wonderful creatures for a long time to come. So here is Animal Class. And welcome once again to Animal Plus. You might be wondering why we keep showing you the different types of animal species. Well, it is very important that we know the types of animals that belong to our beautiful and tropical country of Papua New Guinea. It is also very important that we get to know the significance, the originality, and also their existence of the animals that share our home. I'm here once again at the Port Mosby Nature Park to show you more of the animals and their mysterious lifestyles. Stay tuned and let me take you through. Wallabies are the members of the marsupial group found in Australia and in the nearby islands of New Guinea. 
Like their close kangaroo relatives, they have long tails for balance and large feet and strong legs for jumping great distances. Although members of most wallaby species are small, some can grow up to approximately 2 meters in length from head to tail. Their powerful hind legs are not only used for bounding at high speeds and jumping great heights, but also to administer kicks to fend off vigorous predators. Young wallabies are known as joeys, like many other marsupials. Adult male wallabies are referred to as bucks, boomers or jags and are larger than the females. The adult female wallaby is known as a doe, flyer or jill and are smaller than males. A group of wallabies is called a court, mob or a troop. This animal species is very special and portrays a very interesting lifestyle. What makes or differentiates a wallaby from the tree kangaroo and the rest of the kangaroo cousins? What are the similarities? Watch closely and listen attentively. Classified as marsupials and part of the kangaroo bloodline, wallabies are also pouched mammals. Their young are born tiny, helpless and undeveloped. They immediately crawl into their mother's pouches where they continue to develop after birth usually for a couple of months. Like their cousin kangaroos, they are known as young joeys. The joey will call his mother's pouch home for up to a year if the mother does not become pregnant before, and will leave the pouch to graze and play, then returns to sleep or when danger approaches. They also face several treats. Wild dogs, foxes and feral cats are among the predators. Humans also pose a significant threat to wallabies due to increased interaction. Wallabies are herbivores, which means they are animals that get their energy from plants and only plants. The bulk of their diet is grasses, fruits and other vegetation. They do need water, but they tend to get the majority of their hydration from the foods they eat. They need more energy to stay alive in captivity as they are constantly moving and foraging, obviously here at the Port Moresby Nature Park. They are given popo, watermelons, bananas, finely chopped greens, pre-cooked corn, pea with carrots, scrambled eggs and mealworms. Their captive diet is basically a substitution of the food they eat in the wild. These are the types of wallabies that are currently held captive here in the park. This is an agile wallaby and it is known to be less constant in terms of threats from the predators. And here is the Dobkosis wallaby and is currently known to be vulnerable to predators. Hey Atira, being here, did you ever come across, did you get to come across uh, this wonderful animal that they called the wallaby? Yes, we did. Okay, uh, can you tell us about a bit about what you think about the creature itself? Uh, the creature itself is amazing and I think we should take pride in it. Alright, can you tell us about what, why it is important that PNG take pride in this native breed? Maybe because they're in Australia as well, so we really need to keep them living here in Papua New Guinea as well. Hi PNG and look what I found, this gorgeous bunch of people, amazing students right? Okay, these are students from Pop Mosby Grammar School. I'm going to be asking Terence, Terence is a very nice looking young boy here. Terence, what are you actually here for? We're here to study plants and animals around but nature park. All right. I believe this is very enjoyable, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Let me just ask him one question. Have you guys come across um, wallabies? Yes. And do you love wallabies? Yes, we do. There is always
always a way to save such animals that are somewhat close to danger. Just by being here myself at the park, I am so fascinated by the fact that they are right here before my eyes. But the thing is, I really want to know in detail what the animal is. And I'm going to ask Mr. Ishimo Bebe here at the park to tell us more about the animal itself in terms of conservation purposes. Hello, Mr. Bebe. Hello, Teresa. So, Mr. Bebe, what affects their well-being and what are the main causes of the decrease of their population? The key aspect that is uh, affecting the well-being in, in their natural habitat is mainly the deforestation, logging, and agricultural activities like gardening. And um, the decline in their population is uh, contributed by uh, them being heavily hunted by the locals around that particular region where this particular species is being found. And what are some of your other conservation programs and how are you planning on bringing them into reality? At the moment we are working with other partner organizations and uh, like TKCP and TCA where we believe that this particular species, uh, these two species are found contained within the conservation areas. And here at Port Mosby Nature Park, uh, we believe that one of the most powerful tools to use to educate people out about conservation of these two species of tree kangaroo is education. And therefore we have an ongoing education program here at the Port Mosby Nature Park. And finally, what are some of the organizations that you partner with in order to bring about conservation for the betterment of their lifestyle in here? Uh, we're working closely with other partner organizations like uh, TKCP or Tree Kangaroo Conservation Project and TCA, which is the Tenkil uh, Conservation Alliance. And we believe that uh, these uh, species like the, uh, the Copsis wallabies, which is contained within the, these uh, conservation areas, uh, when they do their work, the conservation uh, work around that particular part of region in Papua New Guinea, they conserve and they bring the message down to the people or the locals in that particular re region where the conservation uh, NGOs are based in there. Thank you so much, Mr. Bebe, for your time. That was really an amazing insight. Educationally, it was really, really informative. I hope you have enjoyed and have at least known something about the wallaby. Join me next time as we show you more on animal plants and the animals that call this beautiful country of Papua New Guinea their home. I'm Theresa Miria and it's bye for now. That was absolutely fantastic and helpful in terms of education purposes. Let's take a break and we'll catch up with you on the other side. Being strongly passionate about one's true originality is one thing that makes you stand out from the rest of the world. Papua New Guinea is the land of very diverse and unique cultures, which is highlighted in the art that can be found in the different provinces. 
Let's check out some of these different styles of art with Place Belong You Me. Hello and welcome to Place Belong You Me. Papua New Guinea has a very wide range of cultural diversity, which is obviously very impressive and stunning. The astonishing beauty of the artwork, the carving, and many more are not just a piece of work done, but they each have different stories created by a group of proud Papua New Guineans who are so passionate about their place of origin. Where I am right now is the Gamba Cry Art Gallery. Let's go check out the place. Come on in. In the common language of Chimbu province in the Highlands region, Gamba Cry simply means earth colors. This gallery was established three years ago with great time and effort put into making the plant vision come into reality. The people that work here are mostly from the Chimbu province. But one of the most amazing facts is that they don't only promote the Chimbo province, but they promote Papua New Guinea's wonderfully exceptional exhibits. I am so fascinated about the rest of the artifacts in here. Well, I can't wait to tell you about the story and the originality of this kundu here the crocodile, and the painting as well. As varied as their kundu drums in Papua New Guinea, there are many types of wood that are suitable for making kundu drums. This is a kundu made by artist, craftsman, and a carpenter who goes by the name of Mari, who comes from the Kappa village in the central province. The body of the kundu is made of rosewood, a strong, fine tree which is then varnished for perfect appearance. The round covering at the top is made of iguana skin and is placed on the kundu and stretched strongly across tied by rope. The rattles on the narrow side of the kundu comes from the empty gallip nuts which is dried up then. The kundu is featured commonly on Papua New Guinea coins and notes and some other surfaces as well. This attractive crocodile carving here is also featured in the legends of the rites of passage of various tribes and certain provinces of Papua New Guinea, sharing a belief in ancestral ties to the aquatic reptile. Extraordinary creativity on the carving, as you can see, portrays an undeniable fact that it is indeed proudly Papua New Guinea oriented. This is also featured in the Sipik and Gulf provincial flags. Such paintings are very rare, of course. Total originality. One can truly appreciate the country's contemporary art after experiencing its origins and traditions. This was made secretly and silently in the hidden corners of Papua New Guinea and is now brought into the spotlight for the whole world to see. I have questions to ask Emmanuel a young artist who is actually in charge of his art gallery. Hello Emmanuel, and how are you doing? Hi Theresa, I'm good, thank you. And thank you for coming to Gumba Cry Gallery. Great. I have a lot of questions to ask you about this art gallery and I believe you have a lot to share with me and the rest of Papua New Guinea. Of course I do. So to start off, what has really motivated you to establish this art gallery? Well, it started off when I was a little kid, about four years old, and I used to watch my uncle's drawing, and uh, I loved drawing, but uh, I decided to do things that they never did. And I was a bit of a renegade in terms. And then when we came down to Moresby, that was about 16 to 20 years ago, I think 20 years ago. And um, I was living with a friend who was painting, and I used to follow him to the craft markets. I knew what to do, but I never did painting before until I met him. And then I started painting for myself after selling for him. And uh, I've been selling for about 14 years before I came here. And we've been here three years now. Um, it's more or less like a commercial version of the local craft markets that we do here. 
Uh, of course, uh, we, the artists still participate at the local markets, but this is also another venue where we, um, the core of the group is from Kerouac in Chimbu province, but we welcome artists from all over, including ladies or females who paint and draw. And uh, it's something that I find I really like doing because it's natural in all of us. We all come from a country where our culture is very predominant and it comes naturally from within us. So it's not like someone has to look for um, an idea to come up with uh, some artwork. It's like from wherever people are from, each province has its own distinct designs and, and, uh, and patterns and colors. So that's what I basically try to harness here. Besides, I also try to give the local artists a chance to expose their own uh, markets to uh, broader clients and uh, to produce in mass scale and maybe see a little bit more money. Fantastic! At this present time, only a few of our young generation treasure the culture and tradition of Papua New Guinea. So from you, what would be your advice to the young and upcoming artists and the students who dream of becoming one? I really appreciate your question, Theresa. It's very nice because when we're here, we don't seem to appreciate what we already have. But well, once you've stepped out of your country, you've gone to somewhere else. And then you look back and you realize that you have a lot of good things here that we take for granted. And my best to the young people was, is to really appreciate what you already have. Your families, your home, your cultures, don't lose them because there's money in everything. You just got to work hard and find out where you can make money from everything. But your culture is very important because it sets you apart from the rest of the world. It tells you distinctly that you're Papua New Guinean. And it's, it's just beautiful because the world's losing it. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for that. That was fantastic. You're welcome, Clarissa. Wasn't that just amazing? Well, of course it was. So if you're interested to know the cultural and traditional paintings and artifacts of Papua New Guinea, do pop into the Gamba Cry Art Gallery at the Vision City ground floor and see all you can, because I believe they have a lot to share with you. Until then, thanks for joining me on Plus Villain Uni. I'm Theresa Miria, and it's bye for now. Here at Housing Home, we are passionate about highlighting our diverse cultures and its natural wonders. We'll be back with more after this break. We care about improving lifestyles. Talk about the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better your life with house and home yeah it's all about the better plan for your life with house oh, 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 oh. in keeping with our art and culture theme we recently went down to a local trade store and helped give it a facelift with the amazing talent of one of our local artists, Jim. So let's see what you can do with a couple of cans of paints.
All right, my great viewers, it's time to leave you now. But before we go, just a reminder, the House and Home team would love your feedback on what you would like to see on the new show. So please jump onto our Facebook page as we can't wait to hear from you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode. On behalf of my House and Home team, have a pleasant night and we shall catch up with you next week, same time, right here on MTV. I'm Godwin Eki, see you then. Lifestyle. It's all about the best.